which is Polar's GPS heart rate monitor uh, for cyclists. And um, I'm just going to go through all of the main screens to give you a feel of the unit. Okay, as you can see, it's quite a large unit. It's got a display of about 2.8 inches across. It's bigger than something like a, Pol um, a Garmin Edge 810, but that size gives it a nice, big, clear display. Okay, I'm just going to go through the main um, features and settings of the unit. We'll start off just by going through the actual profiles. Uh, similar to something like the Garmin Edge 520, the Polar V650 has four different cycling profiles, and you can choose your cycling profile um, before you ride. Um, the profile that you choose determines the views that you see in your training windows. So before you ride, we'd select, for example, road biking, and then which bike we're on, one, two, three, and four. The different bikes are there to have different sensors paired with them. So I'm going to use bike one, and we're going to be road, ri road, uh, road riding. Um, these two flashing down here are telling me it's looking for the GPS and it's looking for heart rate. I haven't paired it with um, power or cadence. Um, or a speed sensor, so uh, they're not flashing. If I had had it paired with a power sensor, a cadence sensor or a speed sensor, um, Bluetooth smart they would be, then it, they would be flashing too. Uh, we're going to assume that the GPS is settled and that the heart rate is settled and we're going to start a ride. So press this button here and that's now the ride started. You can swipe for the different screens is easily to, easy to do when you're riding. The first thing you notice straight away if you have seen a V650 before is that they didn't used to have mapping. They now do, which is great. Um, the mapping is using open source maps, which is uh, free. And you can select in the setup the size of the zone that you want the to have programmed into the, so the actual zone you want programming into the unit. And it's a 450 kilometer square area so it's a really big area. Um, I, I've got pretty well much of central UK in mind. And um, once, you're, once you've got the map into the system, it's right down to street levels. So it gives plenty of detail. Remember one thing before we go any further with the uh, review though, the, the Polar V650 is not an auto routing unit. It's a uh, it does mapping to show you where you've been and so you can look at places and destinations but it doesn't actually do route mapping like something like an Edge uh, 810 or Edge 1000. Okay, so these are the different screens. Um, as you'd expect, you can see what you want to see. Uh, back to start is very useful. This little target arrow here shows you as the crow flies north, east, south or west how far away you are from the start, which is particularly useful if you're maybe out mountain biking and you have an injury and you want to get back, or you're just tired on a road ride and you want to get back as quickly as you can without taking the long loop back, you can use this to get yourself back nice and quickly. Okay, uh, I'm just going to, I think I must be in mountain bike mode here, because all of these data here looks like it's relating to mountain biking total ascent, total descent, VAM is your vertical climbing speed, um, uh, vertical meters per hour or feet per hour as it's got there, cadence, if you have a cadence sensor, this will work to any Bluetooth cadence sensor. I've got some heart rate data, average and max, and some speed average and max, and another view of the um, uh, map view. So, press once is a lap, Press and hold is to stop or continue. I'm going to stop that session there. Say yes or no, I'm going to say no. Um, so I was in road cycling. I've been messing around with the settings on these last few days, so uh, some of the windows are a bit different to what I'd expect. Uh, let's have a look at the settings. Go into the settings. We're, going to, we're just going to go through some of the main settings. The sport profiles is where you would you choose what you want to see for the different profiles. So road cycling, how many views, uh, what type of HR view if you want percentage or bit beats per minute, speed view miles, miles per minute. Uh, I'm sure most cyclists would work for miles per hour. Uh, auto pause, on off, auto lap, on or off. If it's on, 
how long it's for. I've got an auto lap on mine of 10 miles. And then um, heart rate zones. Heart rate zones are, this is using Polar's sports zones, which is five zones based on your predicted maximum heart rate. Uh, and, and very useful, something if you've had a Polar before, you know, for normal sort of improving your cardiovascular endurance, you want to be sort of in zone three. Um, zone two is some weight management, fat burning zone. Um, and zone four and zone five are for increasing your um, your speed and your speed endurance and your power um, spending a few a few minutes maybe in zone five okay so that's the way you set up that and then the same again we have power settings as well I don't have a power meter currently but again you can have you can set your power zones um, in the training views all very easy you choose how many items you have per window so view one five items at the top I've had my heart rate zone graph. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I um, wanted to show you how to do the maps. The maps are great, obviously that's a new feature. General setting and then go into maps. So the offline map area, you choose the area that you want to have in your unit. That little square there shows the size it can be. So you can see it is a large area, it's 450 kilometres by 450 kilometres I think. So for me living in Norfolk, you know, I've, if I get all of Norfolk in there, I've got most of the south coast right away, but up beyond Leeds and all the way across to North Wales and Merseyside. So it's a large area. You press update and that map will be put into the unit. Um, and then you can choose topographic and bike routes as well. Bike routes are little dotted lines but it shows you on the map. Um, for preferred cyclist routes but again remember it's not a um, auto route and you can't say I'm here get me here the map is just there just for information while you're riding um, just to give you an idea of the uh, data you'd expect to get post ride I'll just uh, obviously I've been using the V650 for some time now and um, I will go into a ride here from last Sunday well, I was lucky enough to spend that in Dolby Forest. Um, it was a, not a particularly long ride, but 21 mile ride. A duration of three hours. Now on this particular day, I didn't have my heart rate monitor on. Unfortunately, I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, I sent 2,000 feet descent, nearly 2,000 feet. Maximum altitude, 814 feet. Some more information. And then obviously a map of the Dolby Forest route that, that I did. So that's my my route, and then it's been overlaid on top of the open source map. Uh, you can't zoom in on that. So let me get one with um, heart rate. That's not. Let's try this one. Okay, so this was just arrived just a couple of days ago on my uh, Cannondale. Uh, short ride, just an off-road ride, just over an hour, uh, just about 11 and a half miles. Heart rate average, heart rate maximum 164, heart rate average 128. And um, sorry, go back into that. This is a, this is a, this is what I I really like about the um, V650. This is Polar's training benefits. This tells me real time post session in this box here what this session actually means to me as a uh, somebody who's looking to improve their fitness. Uh, I can't zoom in, I'm afraid I was trying to. Um, it says there, excellent, this long session improved the endurance of your muscles and your aerobic fitness. It also increased your resistance to fatigue. And then this bit here is um, time spent in the different training zones from one up to five. I didn't go into zone five at all, but I did spend eight minutes, nearly nine minutes in zone four. Most of the time was in zone three, which is why it's um, uh, improving on my cardiovascular endurance. There's some uh, altitude alt altitude data. Again, some lap data. Okay, um, I'm just going to take the unit off now to show you. It's a quarter turn lock, similar to the um, 
similar to the Garmin's. And on the back there you can see the little locking lugs. There has been some criticism about the um, head mount. It it would be nice if it came with two mounts because most people have more than one bike and it would also be nice if it came with um, some shorter elastic bands. These ones were very long. On my large oversized Cannondale mountain bike it's fine but on my road bike I had to put, sort of, put some twists at the back to make it lock. So as you can see, excuse me, this one is, is quite stable but on the road bike it did need a little bit of adapting to make it nice and tight. Okay. Um, sorry, one other thing there. On the back here this is where we connect the USB port. So if we need to do a firmware update or download the data, that comes from here. Um, that, that's another thing that would be nice. I would have liked it if the unit had provided Bluetooth connection to the Polar Flow app, some, similar to the Polar, uh, the V800, the M400, the A300, those wrist units. They all send the data to the um, Polar Flow app on an Android phone or, or uh, iPhone via Bluetooth, so that, that would be nice. Hopefully that's something that will become um, in the future. Um, but overall, I'm really pleased with the V650. It's an uh, easy to use unit. The color display is great, very clear while you're cycling along. Um, battery life is good, about 10 hours. A neat little feature here is this, um, slide this up, slide this down, sorry. Uh, we have an emergency light here. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not good blindingly bright, but if you're caught out in the dark and you need something so you can be seen, it's not really to help you see, but so you can be seen, that is useful. Um, so yeah, overall, we've been very pleased with the V650. Looking forward to testing the um, the uh, M, so the V400 shortly, which is the slightly smaller cut down version, which doesn't have the maps, but. Um, Looks to be looks like it's going to be very popular at a good price. The V650 is currently selling on Amazon for around about the £200, which I think offers a very good value for money. Um, please visit heartrakemonitor.co.uk for the full review and some more detailed photographs and such like. That's heartrakemonitor.co.uk. Thanks very much for listening. Cheers.